What's going on, Broskies? My name's Shivoki. Welcome back to another Season 3 God Guide for Smite. Today, there's absolutely no monkey business with this little guy, the Howler Monkey God, Hoonbots. He's my second favorite jungler in the game right now, and for some reason, he's insanely underrated. Not quite sure why, but whatever. He has an amazing passive, which gives him the key ability to get fed early game and carry all damn game. But anyway, today, I'll be going over how to play this guy, good combos for whom bots, and also who is he good and who is he bad against, and obviously my typical build and much, much more. Now guys, please leave a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you have not done so already, and let me know in the comments down below your typical whom bots build and any tips and tricks you have which you've learned for the monkey man, of course. Now let's start off this video with his passive and abilities. Boombots' is passive is amazing, guys. I absolutely love it. It's called Infuse Strikes. It's a buff ability. It affects himself and it gives him, of course, physical damage. Using an ability gives Boombots' next basic attack within three seconds a 30% crit chance for three seconds. Like I said, it's amazing. It's crazy. Now, this is every single ability. So if he slams down with his two, hits him, gets a crit, okay, it goes away. Jumps, lands on him, or whatever. He doesn't have to land it. He just uses his ability, he gives him three seconds of 30% increased crit chance. Now, of course, if you're building crit and you're building crit damage and you're building penetration, this is going to severely help you. I mean, I'm hitting a thousand plus of this guy all the fucking time after ability, or even without an ability. Just it helps even better your chances with this passive. So early game, guys, this passive is very strong. It definitely screams, hey, buy red pot for me. Hey, level my two. It's just all about hitting hard and critting hard early game, and it also helps them get really fed into the mid to late game as well. Now, after all the abilities, guys, I'll be going basically into detail about how to level his abilities and which one comes first. Now, before I say anything, I see a lot of people leveling the second, and that's definitely a very wrong move, guys. Hoombots is number one, it's called Somersault, it's a leap ability, it affects enemies with physical damage and a radius of 15. Hoombots flips through the air, crashing down at its target location, doing damage to all nearby enemies and slowing them. Now the slow literally never increases, it's always at 50% and it always lasts for 2 seconds. The only thing you're leveling up is the damage, and the damage really isn't that high. It's nice, it's very nice, but it's definitely a skill shot, it takes a lot more skill to land this than the monkey or the slam down and I definitely tell you to level this last guys, 100% level the last. So it hits pretty hard, really nice damage, 210 later, but uh, the cooldown is also very, very short on this, which is really cool, helps him get away, helps him engage, and overall it's a very, very awesome ability. Now, Overhand Smash is Mr. Monkey Man's number two. I love it, it reminds me of Bologna Slam Down, so there are slight problems with it that you need to keep in mind. But anyway, Hoombot smashes his staff to the ground in front of him, doing damage to all enemies. Now, it's a cone ability, guys, so it's it's quite a wide cone, too. Very good for lane clear, very good for team fights. It hits very hard. Everyone affected in that cone gets hit as well, guys. It's 85% of your physical power. Um, the starting damage is 75 and maxed out at 295 plus 85, so it hits fucking hard. I'm hitting about 600, 500, 700 around there, but my basic attacks guys are hitting for 1,000 plus, so it's really about basic attacks of this guy. Um, the mana cost, guys, is not too much to deal with. It's 60 early off and 80, so he has mana issues in my opinion, but he's not a type to constantly be blowing his abilities, so be aware of that. He's Like I said, he's really good with his basic attacks, and of course, the cooldown, guys, is a max of 8 seconds, so at the end of the game, it's definitely something you don't, you don't need to worry about. It's constantly up all the time especially with cooldown, so make sure you're leveling this ability first, definitely. Now with Thor and Nezha had a baby, well, that's disgusting, but anyway, it kind of be like Hoonbots. It's Sacred Monkeys is number three, guys. Hoonbots commands a monkey through the air that pounces on enemy targets, doing damage on each pounce. Now, of course, hitting each enemy god only once. Now, pressing the button again teleports Hoonbots to the next target hit. A very cool ability, guys. It helps you get away. It helps you chase somebody down. It also just really helps you dis disorient people. You can also dodge abilities very easily with this. If you're running towards somebody or running away from somebody, you can throw it, you know, bounce on the minions, and they they'll maybe expect you to teleport to it, and you won't teleport to it, or they won't expect you to do it, and you will teleport to it. So it's a very cool ability to really if you once you master this ability, guys, you'll be able to do some seriously cool things with it. Now you get 70% of your physical power, guys. It starts at 80 damage and max out at 260. And the max targets hit all the time. It'll never increase. Is always four targets, guys. So four targets, usually minions. If you get lucky, you can bounce around a couple of gods. It hits pretty hard, guys. Late game, definitely. So I level the second, guys. I can level, of course, the two first, the three. When I can level ultimate, I level the ultimate and I level the one last. Now the cooldown is always 13 seconds. So this is the longest cooldown you're gonna have, of course, minus your ultimate. But overall, a very amazing amazing ability guys be sure to use it for really good getaways really good engagements and definitely chasing down the enemy fear no evil is hoon bots's ultimate guys a very amazing ultimate it completely changed the tide of fight so let's get into it hoon bots summons a totem from the ground to ward off all evil any enemies caught within the radius 
are fear directly away from the totem and take damage every 0.25 seconds. Now guys, of course it's ground target, it actually hits pretty decent, this is why I'm leveling it whenever I can, because it's pretty cool. The damage per tick starts at 30 and max out at 50 damage per tick plus 15% of your physical power so it hits pretty hard and also when you're leveling it you're increasing the lifetime to a max of two seconds now the damage maximum force guys is going to be 400 plus 60 uh up to 120 percent of your physical power so it's ba basically a very good ultimate it allows you to go in there change the complete type of fight i've seen fights where it's been a five on or sorry four on five and someone dies so on my team, so it's three on five. I go in there, I ult, I slam down, I start critting the backliners, fucking up the mage, screwing up the, the hunter, and doing some serious, serious damage, and really allowing my team to get good peels and all that good stuff. So honestly, it's good for saving teammates, it's good for saving your own ass. It's just a great, quick ability that saves your ass and saves your whole team's ass all the time. And once again, changes the complete type of a fight instantly with one press of a button. So guys, the cooldown, of course, is pretty long. It's 90 seconds. With some cooldown, you're looking at about 50, 80 seconds around there. Not too bad. Like I said, the radius is 35, so quite a big radius. But one of my favorite ultimates in the game, definitely. Very fun to use and very fun to really see the entire team just get devastated once you press that ultimate button. Now, the last time I played Hoombots, a lot of you guys were asking me, Hey, dude, how do you how do you combo with Hoombots? What's the best way to play him? And my main thing to say about him, guys, is if you had a combo, if I had to say, Hey, this is the way you combo, I would say go in with the ultimate, slam down with the two, jump up in the air, slow him down with the one, and of course, I think if they get away after all the crits you're doing, um, then teleport to him with a three and fuck him up. But honestly, the main point, guys, is using the passive the way it needs to be used. Make sure every single time you use an ability that you are using basic attacks right after. It's very, very important to get the crit off, to hit as hard as you can, to use the full potential of Hoombots as much as possible, guys. Now, this is my typical build for Hoombots. Warrior Tabai, Yoan's Wrath, Deathbringer, Bloodforge, Hydra Lament, and of course, Tide's Bane, guys. This is the perfect build. This is what I would build if I have no need for, you know, situational items, if I'm super carried, if I'm kicking lots of ass, I'm fed as all hell, I'm just doing so, so well. This is what I build, guys. You got a lot of penetration, a little bit of life seal, really nice crit damage, and of course, the overall power is just so great on this guy. I'm hitting really hard with this build, guys. It's definitely one of my favorite assassin builds for him. Hands down, you can go Malice if you wanted to, in this in this situation but of course i like what i have here now of course if i need situational items i will build them that's why they're called situational items a lot of you guys go well why don't you have this in your build all the time why don't you have this defense or this in here if you don't need it don't build it that's my own one-on-one guys definitely now breastplate of valor of course if i need it i'll definitely swap out titans being for i don't really need it so i'll go ahead and go warriors tabai breastplate of valor Yoan's Wrath, Deathbringer, Bloodforge, and Hydra's Lament. And now if I need Bork of Hope, I'll go um, Warrior Tabai, Yoan's Wrath, Bork of Hope, Titan's Bane, I'm sorry, Deathbringer, Bloodforge, and Hydra's Lament. So basically what you're doing is you're swapping out items you don't really need. Now if I need Brawler's Beatstick, of course, that's a given, I'll get rid of Titan's Bane for Brawler's Beatstick because it's very important to have the anti-heals if needed, and Ganges Guard just works so well on him. I don't really have much situational items for him, but this is what I usually build. Um, any questions, guys, please leave in the comments down below. Your own typical build. Also, let me know what you guys build on Homebots. Now, I have two typical starts, but like I said in the beginning of the video, guys, I am absolutely in love with Red Potion on Homebots. It's just amazing. It just, for me, works the best because his passive is just so, so cool. So I start off with level two boots, red pot, one health pot, and two mana pots. The reason I'm doing this, guys, is because he needs the mana early game because he's very mana hungry. And of course, for him to use abilities, he needs mana. And for him to use his passive, he needs to use ability. So it all works together. Now, the reason I'm using red pot, guys, it gives him extra power. And also, I have the, move, the movement speed and the power from the combat boots. So with the potion, I'm hitting really hard on those crits early game. And it really allows him to be a very strong presence early game with red pot. But with this, guys, play very safe. The only difference I have for my uh, jungle start guys is I use Boomba's mask instead of boots. Now, that's kind of a given, very very typical build for junglers. I love him in jungling, he's very, very fun. He has the ability to go in there, cause some serious damage, all people really cause crazy havoc with his ultimate and teleport around with his three. So he's a very, very awesome jungler, probably one of my favorites. If I could say top 10, he's probably in the number five spot or four spot when it comes to junglers. I love him, so other than that guys, this is what I start with every time I play Boombots. Now, when it comes to relics I use in this game for Hoombot, is definitely Purification and Sanctuary for the most part. The reason I use this guy is because he's kind of squishy. He doesn't have the ability to get out of things as easily as some gods. He doesn't have an immunity. He doesn't have things like that. So, Beads definitely helps him out. Sanctuary really secures the, the fact that he's not going to die. But if I want to get a little little more crazy, if I'm, if I'm fed and I'm kicking some serious ass, I'll go Phantom or Blink. Now, Phantom is awesome on him, guys. It allows him to really stick to their ass. 
hit really hard in mid to late game, he pops this in a team fight, everyone's getting followed, they can't run away, he's critting really hard, he pops his ultimate, he teleports to them. It's just a very sick combo. Now Blink's very fun for setting up cool Blink uh, ult combos, or even blinking and slamming down somebody to finish him off. So Blink's a really cool thing, but if you want to play it safe, if you're new to Humbots, I definitely recommend Purification and Sanctuary. Now in case you didn't hear me in the beginning of the video, this is how I level Humbots. I level the two first guys, then I level the three, then I level the ultimate and the one. The one doesn't really have an importance of leveling guys, there's no increase on anything but damage. Now the three is very, very cool. I love it. It's really good for uh, cooldown, all the things, and teleporting around. Cool, cool stuff, and I also love it too because it hits really hard. And of course, whenever you can level the ultimate, go ahead and do so because it's very important. It increases the lifetime, it increases the damage on it, and all that cool stuff. So go ahead and pause it here if you have any questions, of course. Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, one thing I want to say, guys, is he has a couple gods he's really good against and a couple gods he's very bad against. And I think Tyr is a god that really fucks him up all day long if he gets caught in his uh, his two. It's kind of like Bologna's Bludgeon. If Bologna spins around and gets easily interrupted, that's literally Humbots all day long. He pops his two, he's in the middle of the air and someone can silence him or stun him or whatever it is and it's just very easy to stop him. So someone like Nox, someone like Poseidon, someone like Tyr, uh, a Wheelix fucks him up all day long. Even Ho Yi sometimes because the whole passive with the crits. Now, other than that, there's some gods he's really good against. I think he's really good against Osiris. I think he's really good against um, some mages, definitely some squishy ones. He's really good against Zeus. He's really good against Cupid in some cases because he can easily dodge the, the arrows. He's really good against a lot of mages like John Quay and things like that. Some, some mages who really can't get away as easily, he's all over them all day long. So if you don't have a getaway, Humbots will fuck you up. But if you have the ability to stun him, interrupt him, you'll probably mess up with bots pretty easily. So other than that, guys, that's it for the god, guys. Be sure to like it if you enjoyed it, guys. Every like on the video really helps, so please smash that motherfucking like button. Subscribe if you haven't done already, guys. We're almost at 12,000 subscribers. Can't believe it. We're passing all my peers. It's insane, guys. I'm so humble that you guys are really helping me here. All support's amazing. I love your faces. Be sure to comment down below what god you want to see a god guide next for. And as always, my friends, do some motherfuckers. Do some